So in this deep dive, I wanna talk about file classification and really why classification has become so important to organizations today. There's a lot of stats around, but they all seem to agree that around 90% of an organization's unstructured data, so Word documents, PowerPoint, Excel, are just stored on file servers. So things like SharePoint have the other 10%, which tend to be a lot more structured and controlled, but 90% of all your data is on a file server. And you really don't know what's in that data. You can't really be assured that it's protected the right way, that it's being backed up, that you're meeting retention periods, or you're deleting it. Because there's certain types of data companies don't wanna keep for more than a certain amount of time. And there's these huge risks that companies lose data. They put it somewhere they shouldn't have done and it gets downloaded. And then 100,000 subscribers know all the credit card details or you have this big exposure which could ruin your company and obviously can ruin your reputation. And so we wanna try and use sort of data loss prevention technologies as the companies are trying to classify the data already. Maybe they put it in specific locations, they back it up a certain way, maybe they try and look through the data, they ask users to classify it manually, but these are all very problematic. So Microsoft has a solution and it's called the File Classification Infrastructure. And this was actually created as part of Windows Server 2008 R2 as an addition to the File Server Resource Manager. Now, if you've ever played with the File Server Resource Manager, this is a great component that lets you enable folder level quotas that can be shared between groups of users, which is very different from the inbox quotering, which was volume level. But it also let you control things like live file screening, which type of data can be written to different locations, and then give you these great reports. So the file classification infrastructure, it was kind of this next step that if I actually look, it allowed you to create these classification rules. And what these rules could say, let's say, for example, I'll look at this rule here. It would say, well, look, if I find this expression, so three numeric dash two numeric dash four numeric, which in America is a social security number, I want to classify this as personally identifiable information as moderate. So it allows me to actually classify our data. And that classification is actually stored as part of the data. Uh, with NTFS, we have alternate data streams. So this is actually stored as part of the NTFS metadata about that object. And also, if it's an Office document, that classification is stored as part of the Office document as well. And in Windows Server 2012, it gets written to the security descriptor. Because one of the big changes in 2012 is this classification we're doing can now actually be used for authorization. Dynamic access control allows the classification of the data to be used to control how that data is actually accessed and who can access it by comparing classification to attributes of the user, the computer that user is actually leveraging. So the first thing we have to do is actually have what are these classification properties? And in 2008 R2, there were none in box. You had to manually decide which classifications do I need, which could be a huge pain point. The good news is in Windows Server 2012, we now actually have these classifications built in as part of Active Directory. So you run the Windows Server 2012 Forest Prep, it will actually go and create a new partition in your configuration partition that will store a bunch of these classification properties. Now they're called resource properties in dynamic access control. And if I was to fire up ADSI edit, we could actually see these. If I go to my configuration partition, services, claims configuration, and resource properties, this is where they're stored. These are all those properties we're looking at right now as part of dynamic access control. Now by default, they're all disabled. So you would actually have to go in and enable the ones you want to use. Also, some of them require some initial values. For example, company, there are no default companies. So you would have to go in and add companies as possible values. So I did Savile Tech and LexCorp. So you enable these properties you want, and that's great. So now actually you have this head start that you actually have these inbox classifications. And I can refresh. 
and it will scan all those and give me those from the Active Directory. So now we have these classifications and I can see these directly in the file system. If I actually just go and create a new text document, so I'll just call it test one, Windows Server 2012 actually exposes that classification as part of the GUI. And you can see by default, there are no classifications set, which is fine. So the next part is, so I've got these classifications available. Well, now I need to actually be able to scan the data and set those classifications. So here I have a bunch of rules. And where these rules came from is actually called the Data Classification Toolkit. So this is a solution accelerator from Microsoft. So search for Data Classification Toolkit, download it, and it works on Windows Server 2008 R2 and Windows Server 2012. So the great thing this kit does is for 2008 R2, it basically includes all of these properties. So obviously you don't have it in the Active Directory unless you're actually using a 2012 file server, but it also contains a bunch of templates. So one of them, their standard template, has all of these classification rules just available to you. Again, they're all disabled by default, but you would look through them, enable the ones you want. So I've already run this, so that data classification toolkit, you see I've got it installed. You say I want to import a classification. And the way you typically want to do these classifications is, I am having lots of rules, lots of tasks. I don't want to manually do these on every server. So you're going to create a staging server, a master server. You would install these templates and then configure the rules that you want. So for example, I've got this set PII, so personally identifiable information, to moderate. So the way this works is which folders and which types of data should this apply to. And then I want to set the PII, which is going to show me all the classification properties that I've enabled. I want to set it to a value, so I've said moderate, if it has this expression at least once within that data. So it's going to set PII if it's found once in there. Like I said, if I want to reevaluate, so that rule is now there and that's running. When it runs, we have this configure classification schedule. So you can say run it weekly, at particular days, monthly. And new to 2012 is I can allow continuous classification. So as data is written, it's automatically going to classify that. So if I take my file, test content, one, two, three, dash four, five, dash six, seven, eight, nine. So a social security format, and then save this. What will happen after a few seconds, so I'll come back again. is it's now been set. So that rule triggered and it's now set that to PII moderate. So that's great, I now have ways to classify my data automatically. And this is just examples you get in box. Another cool thing you can do, if I look at this classification rule, you'll notice I'm basing it just on sort of these basic items. But you can actually do a lot more. Instead of a content classifier, I could use PowerShell, for example. So with PowerShell, I could write a script that does far more complicated, far more flexible options in how I want to set those classifications. That classification data is actually stored as that NTFS alternate data stream I talked about already. So if I actually go to this folder, do a get item, on that file, and I want to look at my streams, you'll see I now have this extra stream. It's actually containing that classification data. So now I want to do something with this. So then I have file management tasks. So a file management task works in a very similar way. It has a scope of the folders it's going to work on. It has conditions. 
So this condition is personal, personally identifiable information is greater than public. So it's moderate, it's high. It's not already RMS encryptable. There's that scope. And my action is gonna be, I'm gonna call an RMS template. And the RMS template I'm gonna use is my no print copy. So this is actually tying into my RMS server where I've defined all of these templates. Now I could do a custom action, which means I can pretty much do anything I can do from a command prompt. But for now, I'm gonna leave it as the RMS. Now to see this in action, obviously the RMS doesn't work with a text document. So I'm gonna jump over to a Windows 8 client. And I'm gonna create a new Word document. We call it test two. And if I look at this right now, let's just jump back over to the file server again. It's just the data, that there's nothing there right now. So let's open this file up. This is another test. And I'll put that same social security number in it again. And I'm gonna save that. So that's saved. Notice the size is 12K. I'm gonna jump back to my file server. And we can see it's 12K. If I look at it right now, there's no classification yet. But I'm just gonna sit here. Because what's gonna happen now is, it's gonna classify that data. And at the same time it classifies it, notice this temporary document is scanning through. And suddenly the size has jumped up as well. So what it has done is it would have classified it as that PII to moderate, but also it now would have run that task that said, hey, if a file is classified as PII moderate, make sure RMS is applied to it. So I go back, I see the new size, I double click on it. And now I see, hey, you've got an RMS template applied and I can view the permissions. And there we are. So what we've done here, and really not a lot of effort, all I had to really do on that file server was install FCI, which is part of the file server resource management to its file and storage services, file and iSCSI services, file server resource manager. I made sure an active directory. I had enabled using the ADAC the resource properties. And then to get going quickly, I installed that data classification toolkit. And when I ran that, what I actually did, I did the import classifications on my local host, and I imported its baseline data classification toolkit package, which created all of those rules and those tasks you saw. Notice there's also a PCI and NIST, NIST <laughs> option there. So I just carried on going through these options. And then I just went and enabled a couple of the classification rules and those tasks. So it's very, very easy to get up and running with this technology and it's extremely powerful. And this is now just for running these basic tasks. Again, I can now use this as part of dynamic access control to also control who can actually access this data. I can actually run reports through this as well. So one of the nice things here is as it's running these things, I can actually jump over to my storage reports management and I can actually go and run FSRM reports. So let's say I can look at those. Well, what is the personally identifiable information? So that is file classification infrastructure in about 15 minutes. I hope that was useful. It's a phenomenal technology Take a look at it, definitely use the data classification toolkit to get a head start, but you're gonna to wanna to use that just as a foundation, create your own rules, your own tasks. Once you've finished doing all that customization, you will then export it out, so you don't wanna redo all that work on every server, so you can use that toolkit to actually say export out, once you've done all your configuration, and then just import that into all your other file servers. 
So appreciate your time. Thank you.